So this video is going to be about some more string function stuff. Um, I just want you to notice that I've got this tan area highlighted. I think the tan area is where I'm going to be working in the code. Um, if it's not, we'll find out when we look at the code. And then these yellow areas are areas that you could practice some code on. I think maybe I did that in the last video. So let's just take a look at this code. There's, there's quite, a, quite a bit going on here. For starters, of course, we have a bunch of variables declared. And again, you can declare as many variables as you think you need in your program. So, you know, kind of be thoughtful and plan out what you might think. You know, this is a step-by-step -step sort of problem-solving exercise. And you might actually get down into your code and realize that you need another variable for something. So you can always come back up and add it. And so don't hesitate to add variables. There's no limit on this. So for starters, we have a memory location to store a string, um, a couple of memory location to store numbers. Notice the names here, row number maybe, or column number. Um, we have a counter variable. Maybe we want a counter. We have a start row and an end row variable for keeping track of if we're going to do multiple rows. We need to specify where we start and where we end. Or if maybe we're going to go across columns, we might want a start column and an end column. In this particular case, um, we're actually going to go across just one row. So we specify that row here by assigning 3 to that memory location. And we're going to go across the columns. And we're going to start in column 5. And we're going to end at column 11. So let's take a look at what this code does. So basically, the first thing you're going to notice here is uh, I've got a little comment that says loop over the columns in the specified row. So that's how we're setting up this particular loop. So we use the column variable up above for our loop control variable. And here's the next statement down below. And again, notice the indenting. You need to do the indenting. It's not optional. You should do the indenting as soon as you type your code. I've noticed a lot of you working on your code, and you think, I think, that the indenting comes last. It's very important to indent as you go to help you understand what your code is doing and to help you troubleshoot your code when it's not working. So indent the code as you're typing it. So here's our loop control variable column. And we want it to start at start column and go through end column. So we specify all that in the heading here for our for loop. Now you notice the very first thing I do inside the body of the loop is I use my cells operation to take the row I'm on and the column I'm currently on. And the column value, of course, is from my for loop here to grab the value out of that particular cell and store it into the string variable. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some tests on that string. So my first test checks to see if the length of that string is five characters. If it is, I'm just going to message box the location of that particular string. You'll notice that the if statement has the if, the then, and then we have the end if down at the bottom. And this, of course, is the test. The length of the string is it equal to 5. The next test you see down here is going to test to see if the string length is equal to 0. That's just checking to see if there's an empty string in that cell. And so that's a pretty straightforward thing. And again, we just record back out using the message box where we found that empty string, the row and column location. The final one down here is a little bit more interesting. What it does is it uses the in string to test to see if their letter K is in the string that we just pulled out of the cell up above. We tell it to start looking for that K at position 1 in the string. So it'll always start at the beginning and scan through to see if it can find the letter K. It might be an interesting exercise if you were to try to determine whether or not that lowercase K is case sensitive. In other words, will it find uppercase K? in the string. If that's all that existed, you could actually test that out. And finally, then, we just message box that also out to the screen. You might want to notice in my string here that I'm printing, I can use the apostrophes to you know, indicate that I wanted to quote something inside of a quoted string. Um, it's possible to put quotes inside of a string, but we're not going to discuss that right now. You might look that up in your book to see if you can find out how to do it, or search the web to see how to do that. So why don't we just go ahead and run this program and see what it does. Remember, the first thing we're going to look for is string length of 5, then string lengths of 0, and then whether or not there's a k in the string. So let's hit go. So first it says it found a 5-character string at row 3, column 5. And that's correct. We can just see that there. 
The next thing it says, it found an empty string at row 3, column 6. Row 3, column 6. And indeed, that's an empty string. The next one, it says, it found a, an empty string at row 3, column 9. So there's another empty string. That's indeed empty. And click OK. And it found another empty string. Click OK. Another empty string. And it didn't find one with a K. Let's go run that one more time, but let's put something out there with a K. I must have actually deleted the string I had out here with a K. So here's one with a K. We'll just copy that and we'll paste it right there. Now that, oopsie, what do I have in these cells? Oh, I have a random string function in these cells. So anytime I change anything, it automatically remaps them all. So that's why things change because of my random string function. So